Hey guys, I wanted to make a little video about doing a bouncing ball now with uh, Flash CC since the motion editor has kind of changed, uh, some, there's some differences than how it used to work so I thought I'd just walk through that. I'm going to do this in Action Script 3 and we're going to start with just some basics so let me uh, close out the history panel here. Um, I'm going to start with just making a little ball. So uh, you can pick a different color. I've, I've got a color set up right now. Um, it's just solid. Uh, maybe let's make it a little more interesting. I'll do a radial gradient and uh, let's pick a color. All right, so that's really unnecessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right, and I'm just holding down shift as I drag this out, but actually flash will constrain it for you anyway. And there we go. We get our little shape. We have to convert this into a symbol for it to be um, motion tweened. So I'm going to just select that shape, go to modify, convert to symbol, or F8 on the keyboard. And I'll just call this ball. I'm going to have it be a movie clip symbol because we're going to have it ro have a rotating element um, inside. So we'll just go with that. And once you turn it into a symbol, notice it gets this nice little blue outline on it. Um, and it shows up in properties as a movie clip. So to animate this, we could go through a great big long set of tweens to, to bounce it out. But uh, one thing that's, that's great about the motion editor is we're going to add a, a bounce in ease on this. But let's first things first, let's start a motion tween. So I'm going to just right click on this first keyframe and I'm going to say create motion tween. Um, Flash will by default extend that motion tween out to be a second so I'm using 24 frames per second so I get 24 frames. I'm going to just make this a little bit longer to begin with so I'm going to have it be 60 frames. Um, notice that the scrubber uh, goes to the end here and if, if yours doesn't make sure that you're at the end um, before we move this. So I'm going to just grab this down and move it and I forgot to do something here. I need to set the pivot point of the ball to the bottom of it. So I'm going to do that by going to free transform. When you have free transform pop up, notice that there's the pivot point. I'm going to just click and drag that down. And the tween kind of targets that pivot point. So the, the pivot point itself doesn't animate over time. So notice that I've just moved the pivot point so it's at the bottom of this. This will be important when we scale the ball. We don't want it to scale from its center point. We want it to scale from that pivot. Um, so to get into the motion editor, this is different with Flash CC. There used to be a little motion editor tab here, um, but in CC, and actually when the first version of Flash CC came out, uh, it didn't have the motion editor, but they've put it back in, but it's a little hidden. So to get there, you double click on the tween span. So I'm just going to double click here, and it opens up this, this little motion editor, and it shows us the what's happening here and basically it shows us this distance that it's traveling now what it's representing here is X position so notice that it's starting at about 50 and it's going to traverse around to about 500 but what we're interested in is the Y position this is the position from the top um, so notice that it starts at about 100 from the top and over the course of the animation goes down to about 350 um, what I want to do is I want to add an ease to the Y position. So I'm going to just click on Add Ease. And when that opens up, um, there's a couple of different things that we can do. We can have Ease In, Ease Out, those kinds of things. But um, the thing that I want to work on is a bounce. And it's specifically Bounce In. Not Bounce, but just Bounce In. Now when I click that, the graph reverses because the graph is showing what's happening over time. Um, but if we look at the animation or itself or look at the stage, let me come back to that and center this. Notice that now the little individual frame positions have moved off of that straight line. They were all evenly distributed across that straight line. And now 
show what's going on over the life of the tween. And in fact, we can um, change the amount. Notice it says four. I could come in here and set this to six and it would add extra bounces in there. Um, it just goes from the start of the tween to the end. But I'm going to set this back to four. That's fine. And when you've got that, I'm going to click out. If I just press return, we see that we get this very natural motion moving across as the ball is dropping down. Um, it's it's uh, the frames are closer together at the top, meaning it's decelerating, and then they're further apart as it, it descends, and then it slows down again at the top of each of these. So we get this real natural bouncing movement without doing any work at all, or very little work, which is great. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to add some squash and stretch so that this ball looks like kind of a rubber ball instead. So uh, we're done with the motion editor. Once you're you know, done messing around with it, you can just double click on it again, slides back up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture the ball right before each squash state. So as it hits the ground, it's going to squash. What I want to do is I want to capture each of these states right before it hits the ground. Um, and I'm going to set a specific keyframe. I'm going to do this by right clicking. So again, just to repeat, I'm in the position right before contact. There's contact right before this. I'm going to come in and I'm going to insert a keyframe and there's a specific kind of keyframe I want. I want to capture scale. And what it's doing is it's just capturing the ball in its nice round position. And I'm going to do that right before each contact. So here's the next one. So just scrub to the contact, go back one insert a keyframe. Again, it's going to be scale. Find that one right before. And there's going to be negligible <laughs> deformation of the ball here, but I'm going to go ahead and insert the keyframe anyway. Alright, so what I've done is I've essentially tweaked this so that I've captured the ball in its nice roundness um, in each of these instances. Notice that it's the keyframe right before impact. So uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and now start the deformation. So squash and stretch, the principle of squash and stretch is that if it squashes into the ground a little bit, then it needs to expand an uh, equal amount going uh, horizontally. So it squashes vertically, I want to expand it out a little horizontally. Now since the scale attribute was captured right before that. Notice that as it impacts now, it squashes and then it goes back to the next open position or, or round position because I captured that next keyframe. So it's important to capture those keys before you start this process. So I've captured all those keys and now the ball will slowly get back to round and then I'm going to squash it down. And this is where setting that pivot point down at the bottom helps because you'll notice as I squash, it goes down towards the bottom rather than squashing in the middle. If I left the pivot point in the middle here, the ball would actually go up a little bit when I was squashing it, um, which would make it not look like it was making contact. And of course you could have a plane or something along here that you needed to bounce against. I just was going to use the bottom of the screen. And again, it gets back to round. And this last one, it's not going to have much impact at all, but I'll go ahead and squash it a little bit. There we go. And then it gets back to round. So if I play this again, now we get a kind of a, a rubberness to the ball instead of just having it just stay plain Jane round.
Okay, good. So, so far so good. Um, now what I want to do is I want to change a little bit of animation inside the ball. What I want to um, do is have it just look like it's rotating as it's falling through space. So I'm going to just double click on the ball. Notice I got my black arrow. When you double click, you go into editing the symbol. Notice it says scene one and here's the ball movie clip. What I'm going to do with the ball movie clip is I'm going to just add a little circle on top of this. And you could do this any number of ways. You could put stripes in or, or whatever. I'm just going to do something that indicates that the, um, that the ball is changing. Um, and I'm going to change the fill color here to just kind of a highlight. Um, well, let's do kind of a yellow highlight. I'll just draw it a little circle. That's, I'm going to undo that. Let me get it more towards the middle. It's chopping out the ball. I don't want it to do that. So, sorry, it's got snapping turned on right now, and I should just turn that off. But I'm going to just build myself a circle. and drag it over. Good. Okay. So I've got this little mark on the ball. It really doesn't matter. I just need some indicator of it rotating. Um, you know, we could even have squashed the gradient a little bit just so that it, as it was rotating around, the gradient instead of being perfectly round would be elliptical so that as it rotated we could see that. But I'm going to do it this way. I've just made this little extra bit. Now, I'm going to do a concept of what's called an embedded movie clip. So I've got one movie clip inside of another. So if I highlight this, I'm going to go to Modify, Convert to Symbol, and make it another movie clip. Now I'm going to call this Embedded Ball. Now. Notice that movie clips have their own timelines. So right now, nothing is happening on this timeline. The, again, I turned it into a movie clip because I want to animate this with a motion tween. So I'm going to right click on it, create a motion tween. And again, you wouldn't be able to do that if it weren't a symbol. So by turning it into a symbol, we, we get over that. Now that I have this nice little motion tween, I'm going to just click anywhere in the middle of the tween. And notice that we have some properties for motion tween. We're no longer dealing with the ball, we're dealing with the tween that's running the ball. Now there's stuff like easing here, but I'm going to set it to rotate. And by default it chooses clockwise, and you could also do counterclockwise, but clockwise is fine. And notice here that it just rotates around slowly. But here's the cool thing about a movie clip is a movie clip will keep repeating this over and over inside of its uh, containing object. So it doesn't matter that this is only 24 frames long and the containing timeline is 60. What will happen is it will just keep repeating looping through these 24 frames. So when we come back to scene one, you'll notice that if I press return, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. That's because movie clips by default, well actually just movie clips just won't show um, any other frames except for frame one. So if you just press return, your first impression will be that it's not working. Don't worry though, if I press command return and we test this, let me move this over here so we can see this. Notice that it comes down and it's making contact and we get the rotation nice and smooth. Now of course I scaled this up. The window is outside the aspect ratio of the stage and that's why it's hanging out up here. If I scale this up a little bit more, we're closer to that edge. Let me see. Yeah, we're pretty close now. But you get the concept. Um, the movie clip inside of the other movie clip is now rotating. It's rotating one uh, rotation per second. Of course, you could make that faster or slower. Um, and that's continuing. And then we've got the motion across the stage. So think about complex motions. There's all kinds of little motions. Like, for instance, if you had a little animation of the Earth and the Moon, and you wanted that 
uh, set to rotate around a sun. Um, it would be very complex to rotate the moon around the earth and then have the, the, the earth's rotation around the sun. Um, you, if you were to do the moon all on its own, it would be um, really a whole bunch of little curly cues, right? You'd swing that around and you'd have to animate this little curly cue motion. Instead, you animate it so it just rotates around the earth. That's an embedded movie clip. And then you take the movie clip that contains both the earth and the moon and you get it to rotate around the sun. And then, geez, if you need the sun to be moving around in the galaxy, that's another embedded movie clip. And you have the sun moving on its trajectory. So you can have all these little complex internal motions. And the trick is to have an embedded movie clip for each of those. So people get kind of confused with why do you do embedded movie clips. And again, it's to contain um, specific motions so that you're not having to you know, do a complex one. Another one, just a simple one that you could think of is, let's say you have a basketball player dribbling. Um, you might animate the dribble going up and down next to the basketball player as an embedded movie clip and then move that player around on the stage and you would move that as a separate movie clip or a, a, the, it would be the container movie clip um, and now you would have that complex movement of the dribbling happening across the whole thing. So anyway, this is, uh, this is how you can animate a ball uh, now using Flash CC. Uh, this is with 2014. Um, let's see if we have a about Flash. Yeah, I, it's 2014-1. I believe it's also just in the 2014 release of CC as well. I think when they first came out with Flash in 2013, it didn't have any motion editor. They had gotten rid of it, um, but then Adobe saw their um, saw the light and decided to bring it back. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this movie.